let's bring in our guest right now, David Wessel, who is the director of the Hutchins Center on Fiscal and Monetary Policy at the Brookings Institution. Also, Vince Reinhardt, who is Mellon's chief economist. Uh, Vince, what do you think? What are you anticipating to hear from the president today? I haven't gotten the draft of the speech either, but I think we can pretty much know there will be a, a strong pointing to job creation, income, a, a well-performing economy. What I'd like to hear, like most investors, we're kind of needy. We'd like to hear about uh, the direction of U.S.-China <coughs> trade dispute. We'd like to hear some support for the effort on the Hill to pass the USMCA uh, trade deal but with Mexico and Canada. And we'd hope, but not likely, uh, not to hear anything about uh, auto trade, because anything he might say about auto trade probably would be negative. Uh, David, let's run through that list. Uh, in, in terms of USMCA, that, that's really up to the House at this point to kind of take up action on that. But the other two items are, are, are items that are unilaterally under the president's control. That's trade with China and, and trade with the auto sector in terms of the EU tariffs that may or may not go on. Absolutely. Um, I, think that, I think that the people in the audience all know how well the economy is doing. They all know that there's some risk to the economy going forward. So there will be, and the people in that room in the markets, a lot of focus on whatever he says about U.S. China in particular. I think the, the uh, auto tariffs are alarming to a lot of people, and I think I, I go with what Eamon says. He's probably not going to use this forum to announce one thing or another. So I think the focus will be largely on China. I think one thing I'm interested to see is of the, all the people who sit behind him at the, at the New York Economic Club, the board of directors, how many of them decide not to come today because they're just not comfortable with Donald Trump? I've heard from a few that they were thinking of not going. I, I'd be surprised if it was an empty day. So only it won't be empty. I want to see who wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And then we're also watching their faces when he goes off on one of these rifts. That's always fun. So are you getting out the popcorn today? That's what you're saying? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no, getting out the popcorn to watch. Um, Vince, let's uh, run through the idea of China. Now, he may not touch on the issue of uh, car tariffs for the EU, but there are some questions that will be asked afterwards as well. My guess is that among the questions would not only be those EU uh, potential car tariffs, but also what he thinks about the Fed and where they're headed right now. Is, is that something that has the potential to either rock or push the stock market higher? On any, any given day, the president could uh, resort to Twitter to send his message about the Fed. Uh, hopefully, we don't hear about Jerome uh, today uh, because it's not particularly productive. Uh, the problem for the Fed is they have to base policy on an outlook, and the outlook importantly depends on what Donald Trump is going to do on trade. They just can't say it out loud. What do you mean? What do you mean? Uh, would you be able to write a, a FOMC statement that said uh, we put insurance easing in place because we were worried that the president might do something bad on, right. on trade? Right. Uh, really hard to do. Uh, so they have to be quiet about that. Hey, David, we have watched um, yields start to push back higher. You're looking at the 10-year almost at 10 percent today, or at 2 percent, the 10-year at 2 percent, I should say. That uh, is something that a lot of our guests today have said, look, that, that's because the economy is improving and things look good. W what do you think about where it's headed and, and potentially what that means? Well, I think the risk of recession has receded in the minds of a lot of forecasters in the market. That's a good thing. I think the fact that the Fed cut interest rates 75 basis points uh, gave the economy a lift. I think the risks remain. And the two big risks I see are, one, that the trade war with China resumes. I think it's really interesting, you know, it was in September 19, and 2016 when he was running for president that Trump went to the New York Economic Club and right. made this very hostile protectionist speech. And so it would be interesting to compare what he says there to what he says now. That's one risk. And the other is the global economy is slowing down. Europe isn't particularly weak. China is slowing partly because of the trade war and partly because of what's going on domestically. So I think that remains a real risk. But for now, my sense is that people are feeling a little better. Earnings have been strong. It would be really nice if the job market strength was matched by business investment. I think that's the real missing link right now. David, do you think that this is likely to be some sort of a policy rollout, though? Again, the no. idea that... No? No. I think this is uh, rah, rah, look at I'm doing a great job of the economy. You people should be lucky that you have me as president. And if you don't have me as president, you're going to get a wealth tax, so you better help me get reelected. Well, I think that's the message. <laughs>